Hold to order 534. Uh, I'll look for a motion first. Excuse Jeff. I'll make a motion to approve. I mean, that Jeff is gone. Okay. And with that motion and that second, we'll have Sue Goldberg. Council Member Canfield? Here. Council Member Chambers? Here. Council Member Phillips is absent. Council Member Salzvito? Here. And Mayor DeVore? I'm here. I'll look for a motion now to approve the agenda for this committee. So moved. Support. Discussion or changes? Sue? Council Member Chambers? Yes. Council Member Phillips is absent. Council Member Salzmiel? Yes. Council Member Canfield? Yes. And Mayor DeVore? Yes. Uh, citizen discussion for items not on the committee agenda. Nobody. All right, we'll move on to item four discussion regarding the show vote. Michael? Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Um, the uh, show vote committee is here tonight to provide you an update. It's probably been approximately, I want to say, about six months since they've provided their last update. Um, they're moving along pretty good now at this point, and uh, they wanted to show you where they're at and, and take any feedback you might have. Uh, Rich LaBobard has been uh, helping them through this process, and I'm going to turn this over to Rich. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, we're going to have a bit of an informal meeting tonight, I hope you don't mind. Uh, we have a meeting of the show book committee, a lot of them are seated behind me. And then, of course, community the whole. So uh, we'll probably have you up moving around the room a little bit so you can see all of the um, show and tell things. And then uh, Chris will be doing a presentation about the 3D model, which is up on the screen right now. And then um, I'll be wrapping it up with some financial information. Uh, but first of all, let's start out and talk about um, how we got where we got. And uh, I'll turn over to Lou. We, we know, I think we can recap on the last meeting, is that we, we saw a need, the committee was formed. Uh, to repurpose the show boats, and then uh, some grant writing happened, and we were the fortunate recipients of a million dollars from the state of Michigan, and then uh, Rotary got involved as well, and they raised about, where did Mark go, 130000 is that correct, Mark? Okay. And then the uh, Chamber of Commerce also raised some money, so we're, we're to this point now where we've uh, um, gotten through a design phase, or conceptual, excuse me, let me back up, we got through a uh, conceptual phase, and I think we showed you that last time, and we can revisit that here in a minute too. But um, let's start off with some introductions real quick, and we'll talk about the showable committee members. And so, if you'd like to stand up and introduce yourselves as committee members, I'd appreciate it. Starting in the back of the room, Mr. Munt, <laughs> Mark Munt. Are you on the committee? Yeah, uh, Betsy Davis. Now we're on uh, Maurice Morgan, Ms. Baker, <laughs> Carol McGregor, Shannon Carter Fiello, Dave Castino. All right. Well, obviously, this is a pretty large group, and so um, what we did was we broke it down into a smaller working group, which is, consists of about six, seven people. Um, I'm the project manager of this project. Um, committee representatives for the working group are Lou D'Agostino, Mark Munt, Liz Baker, <laughs> Carol McGregor. And then we also hired on Chris Chamberlain, he's our owner's rep, and probably the only guy that owns a boat of this size. And uh, they were <laughs> Carol McGregor's been helping us out with the drafting and some of her drawings in the back, we'll go over those a little bit later. And then Shannon Parnafiello just joined us recently too for interior design. Um, well, you want to take over and talk about how we got to this point? Sure. All right. <coughs> I'll leave an agenda up there for you. Thank you. Well, First off, thank you for letting us come and give you an update. But um, how we got to this point that we're at right now is, like Rich said, you guys are all aware of the issue that there was with the boat, that there still is with the boat, how we formed the committee, this, so on and so forth. And we've already presented to you the company, that the engineering company, Seafly, that we did hire to do the engineering. And as far as the where we are in the process with them. We had a meeting with them last week, last Wednesday, and basically all they need from us is just some interior finishes and some other weights to be able to get this, the boat, how it's going to sit in the water, how high up it's going to sit, when it's fully capacitated, fully 
fully loaded, excuse me, and when it's empty. So we're at that point now, and once we get all that ironed out and back to them, then our next step will be to put it up for bids to have it built. And as a committee, I think we're pretty proud of where, how far along we have come in this process. It's been a long process up some hills, down some hills, but I, I think we're, we're headed in the right direction. And it has been, <clears throat> it has been an effort of everybody on the committee, the first committee and the subcommittee as a whole. Everybody has worked together to get, to get it to this point. And we have um, touch base with the fire inspectors in town, and we did struggle through some early, early circumstances with the DEQ. But we're beyond all that now, so uh, after saying all that, I guess we want to move on, unless you guys have some questions as to no questions. Seeing no questions. Just one question. I know there was a deadline of using the funds within one year. How are we looking on meeting that as, deadline? As far as I know, maybe Mike or Rich want to elaborate on this, but as far as I know, we, we are entitled to one extension. And, and talking to other entities around here that receive grants similar to ours. I was, I've been told in conversations with them that if we have the money basically spent in that time frame, then they're good with that. <coughs> Things were, were all good. You know, it was our concern too as a committee, that's why we tried to push it as quickly as we could. But Chris also brought up the point that, and the committee is made a decision that this bolt probably will not be put in the water until next spring, just because of the, the conditions in the winter. Just, I'll step back maybe. The bolt's gonna <coughs> take approximately six to nine months to build. All right. So if we start in June, or the end of June, you guys can do the math. It, it would be smart. I've launched a lot of boats, but I've never launched one on an ice rink before. So, <laughs> so, we, so in all reality, it would probably be next March or April, if everything goes the way it's going. It could be even further along. I mean, it could be June, July. You know, but our goal now is somewhere in that time frame. We have an update from Sergeant Hilton. Oh, extension. So, so hi, Ed Merber with with Dave Hilton Grant's <laughs> office. And sorry, Dave couldn't be here tonight, but regarding, um, so there is a deadline of September 30th for this fiscal year budget. We'd have to go in and make some changes to the grant, but that's perfectly workable, so we can do that. Great. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Perfect timing. Yeah. That was totally unexpected, by the way. Right. <laughs> so I guess at that point, just so you know some of the background, Carol made all the conceptual drawings from ideas that she was received from the committee and just looking at the show itself. She should be applauded. She through this whole through this whole procedure, every time we pull these plans out, even Seafly has mentioned they were expecting something. Me and Greg Canfield and some of the other can relate to this, the old barber napkin. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they were really impressed by the drawings that we did have. It's, Carol should be commended for, for doing that. And the, the committee too, that before we branched off to the subcommittee, should be commended too, because it brought it to the point where we had to shrink the committee down to make more room. Um, Make it more efficient. Make more efficient. Yeah. It wasn't efficient. <laughs> Thank you. But um, do we want to move on to Chris next? Well, let's talk about uh, the conceptual drawings for a minute here. Okay. Do you have all of them, Chris? Yeah. Okay. And Carol, do you want to chime in on any of these? And she, she, uh, Carol received all the feedback from the committee members, and this is what she put together. And she really helped everybody visualize um, what we were looking for in terms of the next generation of the showboat. Um, you can see, let's come back to the very first one if you don't mind, Chris. Sure. There's some really stark differences in this next generation. Um, one, more enclosed space than before, which is very nice, makes it more rentable. Um, 
Two is that it steals elements from the old boat, but also puts some new elements on and make it more uh, streamlined and modern looking. So for example, is, is the top railing wire? I can't quite tell from here. Okay. So if you look at the top rail there, that's wire, where I think now we have chain link fence maybe? Well, well we have a chain link fence, the rest is more native. Right. But it, it makes it look a little more streamlined up there. On the very back of the boat, then, you'll see too there's a little inset deck. And that's a little departure from what we have now. Um, and the top of the boat, of course, the wheelhouse is very, very much larger than the existing one. So it does borrow from the old, but still um, look to the future, I think. Is that a good way to describe it, Carol, you think? Okay. Again, keeping some of the gingerbread, but not, not so much gingerbread that it looks ridiculous. So I think we've all settled on a really nice design. And this one is bigger. We're looking at um, 110 by 30? 30. 30 by 100. 30 by 100 is the new size. You can go on to the next one, Chris. Any questions about this drawing? What's the old one? What's the old one? You recall? It was about 28 by 92, somewhere around. It's just, we just decided to go on Chris's recommendation to get it down the road, 15 foot. If you go over 15, you start pulling super special permits and your moving costs are more, it's, it just doesn't make sense. And his recommendations, we decided to just make it simple. <clears throat> two, two pieces will be coming down the road. On the uh, starboard, Correct. Yeah. Chris, on the starboard side, that's the right side of the boat, you'll see there's three entrances on the main level. The two double doors in the back is really going to be a service entrance. The door in the middle will be the main entrance, much like we have now, and the door in the front uh, will be just an ingress egress from the main room to the deck. Okay, next. Okay, first deck interior, showing um, a rather large open room. I think there will only be two columns in the middle. Yeah. And then the grand staircase, and uh, we'll get into the design, interior design stuff later, but this is generally the layout. We do have an elevator on this one for ADA accessibility, and that's in the, yep, there you go, upper left corner of the drawing. And it's our anticipation that we will keep that bow open uh, to the public all the time as well. Where the current boat is locked up, this boat you'll be able to go on and off the bow pretty frequently. <laughs> Okay. Any comments on this one? Will there be sliders on the front of that to get out to the bow? Yeah. Yes. That's the plan. The, the committee had an idea of keeping it as open as possible so that you can get that nice fresh air in. You get a better idea on the model, you see all the openings. You see all the openings on the model. <laughs> there we go. You'll see all the openings, uh, windows and doors. They'll be more prevalent on the 3D view when I show you in a little bit. Yep. Um, on the bottom part of the staircase there, you'll see there's a little area for a bar as well. And then on the upper part of the staircase to the top of the drawing, there's a serving area. So you can have a, a banquet type food served right there. Okay, and this is the second deck and the third deck. Um, second deck again, big open room, storage space in the back, elevator coming up. Um, and then there's a door to ingress or egress out of the rear deck just for maintenance purposes. That's really not any place the public's going to be. It's just for maintenance of the back of the boat. And then uh, this is the deck that only has one stairway, correct? There's two. There's two. There's two. Okay. We were required by the fire marshal to have uh, two sets of stairs, and that was something we compromised on too. Third deck again. Uh, we call this the wheelhouse room. A large open meeting room. And uh, sliders again, I think, or what we're looking at in the back, and uh, just some counter space around the front of it. Any questions on the second and third deck? Okay, these are some elevations. Board and batten siding, sliding windows. Um, any other standout features there? Flagpole in the front, which copies the existing design. Well, the back there, the back deck. The reason why we put the back, one of the reasons why we put the back deck on, is we plan on putting a uh, illuminated sign, marquee-like, 
and that can be changed to for events in town, events that are going to be on the showboat, somebody's getting married there or something. Just instead of we, we opted to do that, instead of doing like we do now with the Christmas tree and the Valentine's and the guitar for the summer concerts, we opted to step that up into the 21st century, so to speak. And we have a United Signs working with us to make a sign for us. It's approximately going to be, I believe, four feet by eight feet. Four by eight. Like an LED? Yeah, LED. Like this? Mm -hmm. Yep. facing the back, which everyone sees the panel a little. So we'll see that going down the history. Do we have to do any variances to the sign ordinance and the... Most likely this will have to go through yes. um, zoning. Yep. And, and the committee's aware of that. Okay. Yeah, we, we spoke with Mike about it. <laughs> no one's given us a blessing, but we spoke with Mike and he felt that this could happen. I'm not. And I'm not throwing you under the bus, I'm just... <laughs> I just want to make... Yes, yeah, we're no, it's, 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 the, yes. Five, the committee's aware that... Yes. You're not in the historic district there, are you? No. no. Well, we're in the no, water. water. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 like that. And that brings, it brings up a good point. Through this whole procedure, nobody wants to pay um, any kind of ownership on this as far as we've gone to... Coast Guard and other entities, and no one wants any part of it, basically. You know, what do we got to do? Well, is it going to float down the river? No. The Coast Guard said, well, it's not, we don't care. But in saying that, the engineers are engineering it to, I'm going to turn to Chris for going. Uh, I believe it's ABS standards, which is American Boat Building Standards. It's, even though the, the won't be inspected by the Coast Guard, it's totally up to the code. It's not something that's, and, and we're having an additional stability test done on it as well. Um, just like you have a structural analysis of a building done, this will tell you at capacity, if say someone, the, they're getting married on shore and everybody runs to the one side of the boat to throw the rice or whatever, the boat's not gonna tip over. Yeah, it's not even gonna, you won't even notice it. That's why they do these uh, stability analysis. And that's, to me, that's one of the most important things that you're getting for your money through the engineering firm. Do they do that test here, or are they going to do that test where she's being built? No, that's all done in computer design before it's even okay. before we even bid it out. We think of everything on this committee. They can, they can tell you right now. I can tell you because this was part of our last conversation that <coughs> for. X many people on the boat, if the boat's at capacity, it will sit four inches further down in the water versus if there's nobody on the boat. And I can tell you that uh, for every six tons we add onto the boat, the boat goes down one inch. And so they can do all of these calculations in, the, in their software and tell you, answer all those questions. Are the building officials involved with permits or inspection of this at all? There are another committee that not uh, a washed his hands of the two. So. We have um, sought out feedback from the fire marshal, by the way. He's about the only one we can really get to. Reluctantly chime in on it just because we want to make sure that it's safe for everybody. Um, again, it's a structure that's floating and a lot of people don't want to put their hands on it. So, Okay, so we move on? All right, and this is the lighting plan. Uh, again, Carol's put a lot of work into this. The plan is to have ceiling fans so we can keep air circulating. Um, we anticipate you know, you'll be able to turn them all on at once or turn them off individually if it's, if it's too much for you in terms of coolness. But Carol's going as far as putting the electrical plan together, too. Next. And that's just the third deck. And then up on the top, you'll see some seating capacities. And uh, <clears throat> we've determined 281 people is what we can efficiently seat on this boat. Um, fire marshal might actually give us additional capacity. <clears throat> based on his calculations, but 281 is a pretty good size party on the, on the structure. And then uh, third deck, you can see a, a layout if you would have uh, like a conference table and some chairs there. Is the third deck the open area? Is that going to be utilized for 
back up to our seating. Here's the yep. seating chart. Right there. <laughs> Next page. <Yeah. laughs> You can have like a kitchen facility for caterers. Okay, so Sue asked a good question. Will there be a kitchen facility for caterers? Well, we want to, to the greatest of our ability, um, not have water in this structure because it just brings in a whole other level of complication to it. And there's no bathroom down there either. So catered food will have to be brought on and restrooms will have to be off-site as well. And that'll be in, uh, we're proposing to put the restrooms in the old DPW building, which is just a short walk across the river walk to that building. And so, um, again, in terms of safety, we don't want to open flames on the boat either, so we're not going to allow uh, the little burners or candles or anything like that. We want to make sure this is a safe environment for people to be in. So, any catered food that to be brought in and, and kept on electric warmers. Good question. Any questions on the seating arrangement? This is just conceptual, of course. I'm sure people can be creative and fit a little more on there if they want to. Next. That's the end of the That's the end of the Okay. Any questions about the, the conceptual side of it? Okay. So, um, as Lou mentioned, we did uh, hire Seafly. They're the designers, and they're turning this into a, a real live working set of drawings. And Chris will walk you through the 3D model next. Okay, now don't give me any grief because this has got the, uh, the colors. The, wrong, the colors here. Uh, I, I didn't choose these colors very well, and uh, we're not going to paint it that color. I'm pretty sure on that. Keep in mind, Sea Fly is based out of Louisiana, so if you know anything about sports, it's how it's used. I asked them to update this. They sent it to me. I couldn't get it to open. The computer kept freezing up on me. So this is the model from uh, our meeting last week. And don't don't freeze. Don't freeze. Come on. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's looking straight down from the top. Let me get a, a frontal view here. <coughs> so there's kind of a <coughs> side view of the boat, and you don't really see rails on the third deck because there's cables that'll be going through there. But uh, what you see, pretty much everything you see here, is going to be made out of steel. Um, so it's this is all structural related to the boat and uh, the railings will even be steel as well just for a maintenance factor you don't have any wood that's going to uh, require an extensive upkeep i'm going to kind of do a 3d turn here if it'll let me do it um, come on <laughs> So this is all structural, and um, as you look at the hull, which would essentially be from the very bottom to the first floor level, uh, there's some adjustments that have got to be made. It's disproportionate right now. They started by giving us a six-foot hull, which is, if it was sitting next to the dock, would be a three-foot step up onto the boat. So, But we have to, like we said, we're still getting some uh, <coughs> details of equipment, tables, chairs. Once we have... a uh, pretty accurate list of our weight um, that the, with all the accessories on the boat, I'll say, uh, even the weight of the carpet and things like that, then we will adjust that height some and it'll be more proportionate and then it'll be more even with the dock. So it'll be, um, we're doing as much as we can to make this as um, easy for handicap uh, accessibility, uh, to be able to roll on, roll off is the mentality behind it as opposed to having to have a ramp and uh, having someone to have to adjust that all the time things of those nature. Um, the bow of the boat here, even though it looks like it goes elevated, that's more of an aesthetic thing from the front, uh, from the exterior of the boat. If you're on the deck behind that railing, you'll be able to roll right up to the front of it if you're in a wheelchair, right up to the very front of the boat and roll right inside the first floor or all the way into the elevator. There isn't steps. Um, obviously we have staircases, but we're trying our very best to keep it as accessible to everybody as possible. Um, I can show you any particular view if there's a, if there's anything you want to see in particular. Run the back. Sure. You said that uh, the trim or the railings are going to be made out of steel. I'm assuming powder coated. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what we're going to do everything that way, and then we just have longevity out of it. 
Um, the other part of it too is since you're not mandated to haul the boat out every five years for a standard marine inspection, uh, we've talked to the engineers and we've asked them to um, accommodate for that so the thickness of your boat is a lot thicker so if 50 years from now the boat still, if it never gets painted for 50 years, the bottom of the boat isn't going to leak. It's thicker, they, they, they have a formula for how fast steel rots away in, water, in fresh water and they've accounted for that. So. At this point, too, we're, we're going to try to work something in there where the paddle bolt will probably be made out of aluminum, and we're just going to have it just enough into the water, and we're going to have a little motor on it. So mm -hmm. we want it to turn to give it the effect. It will propel it, obviously, but it will like, just give us that effect of the water. Kind of like a rotisserie, but... Yeah, putting so. some work in that, <laughs> just to give it another look. What, for the 50-year maintenance plan, if, if you do have to get that out, is it, is it readily easy to, to pull that up over 50 years of time? Or what Can I that? show you a picture from sure. my boat that's almost identical to this? It's pretty similar. I had uh, exactly that conundrum last year, and I was able to come to... Um, uh, I have these giant airbags, and basically we put them underneath the boat. You pull your boat up to the boat ramp, and you put the airbags underneath it and then you inflate them and it will roll just like they built the pyramids on logs right up out of the water. I'll show you how I did it on my boat as soon as this loads. <laughs> Otherwise, while Chris is going through that, is there any other questions you guys? Are you taking any pieces off that boat and putting them in there we, symbolically or we otherwise? Had, our first plan is a good question. Our first plan was to do that, but as we traveled along this road here, we decided since we're going to be spending a lot of money and putting things into it, we're going to do everything's going to be fairly new. You know, we're going to try to salvage some of it second, third, probably third or fourth phase is to turn more of that, those buildings possibly into a museum. So we are going to try to keep the paddle wheel and some of the other artifacts and, and work it into a museum. And since you brought that point up, we are going to try to incorporate those plaques that you saw before throughout the, the show boat or something similar to them so people can see the history of the boat bolts prior to this boat. So yeah, we are we are trying to keep it um, in tune historically as much as we can. But we did decide. Kind of, um, like wayfinding sign in front that what gives you the history of the boats, you know, like on the approach. Well, we could. We haven't that as far. We'll yeah, play. the museum, Lisa is not here. She's on the committee, but she mentioned something about she wanted to put some of those out there. So the people who are walking the trails and stuff yeah. could could get more of it. Yeah. No, that's we're we're trying to incorporate all that so <clears throat> people will see where it came from and where it's headed. Has there been any interest in any <coughs> auction? People buying parts of the old boat for sentimental reasons. We haven't got to that point. Raising or whatever. But we are going to do something like that because I, I don't know if Lindsay's field any calls, but I have for people that are interested in buying something because they, they can't afford to give give much, but they want something that back from it. So yes, we are, we will be looking into that. You know, basically the next step after we get the um, engineering's blessings and everything, and put it out to bids, so we know where we're at financially. Our, our, our goal was, as a committee, when we first put the committee together, was to raise over a million dollars. Thank you to Dave Hildebrand. He made that half of that easier, but we still do have to raise some more money, and if I could go on to what we talked about. Yeah. In order for this to work, the boat to work, we are going to have to do some remodeling. At the head station or the DPW garage, 
the bathrooms, changing rooms, and Daryl again has got has some drawings, but we're not working on them yet until we get the boat to a point where we can start looking at that and start to fundraise on that. And we may have to fundraise more for the boat. You know, we don't know if the million dollars is going to cover it all. Actually, we have a little bit more than that, but we don't know until we get some real numbers. Chris is ready. Oh, okay, so uh, this is my boat in Lansing. It's remarkably similar in size. Mine's 44 by 110. So, um, and it's three stories, it's enclosed. This boat's been in the water for, oh, it was 17 years when I hauled it out. And I came across this method, which is kind of taking, changing the marine industry. Traditionally, a boat like yours or mine, you drive it to the boat yard. You take it down the coast to, or across the lake to wherever the shipyard is, and they have like a bathtub, essentially bring your boat in, they close the bathtub and pump the water out, or any one of another number of contraptions. But being inland, you're really limited on your ability to do stuff like that. So uh, rather than take my boat apart, which would be similar to like what you're doing, and a few thousand, and a, a lot of pieces, and then you expose all the interior and things like that, I stumbled across this method, which is really starting to change things up. And basically we put a number of these airbags, oops, wrong way, under, um, under the boat, as you can see, and then you just hook a cable system up to it and you, you pull it right up. And uh, this is this is my semi truck and trailer I use for my smaller boat that's 70 feet long, and so I just hooked up. <clears throat> and you can see we just hauled it right up out of the water and blocked it and painted the bottom. And so I can tell you with a pretty good degree of certainty that it can be done on your boat without any problems. You just take up the parking lot while you're doing it. How big of a boat launch did you need to do that? Same size as the boat. I mean, I, I could see yours coming up there where the rowing equipment is at, at your public boat ramp. There would be a, <clears throat> a little bit of adjustment. You know, you might have to move some railings and things like that. Um, but I don't see why this would be a problem 50 years from now or 20 years from now if you wanted to do a uh, check up on it or whatever. Uh, that's no problem. The, the displacement that you could put enough airbags under the boat to have the boat three or four feet out of the water floating in the water before you even take it out. So if you just wanted to look at it without blocking off your uh, park, so to speak, that wouldn't be a problem either. You wouldn't be able, I wouldn't recommend doing maintenance to the boat while it's in the water because you don't, you have to have collection for paint and that kind of thing, but um, to, for an inspection, that wouldn't be too much of an issue. And how do you lug it back in the water? Well, it's downhill just enough. Actually, the so basically this is the tricky part that really I learned on the way it took me 20 hours on the way out and 10 hours on the way back in because I learned in the process. And it's all about changing the angle of the boat. <coughs> if you make it roll uphill, it will come out a lot easier. And the same thing, you just deflate the airbag at the back and the boat wants to roll downhill. Even though, even on a flat surface, you just change the angle and the boat wants to roll. Just a little push with a loader or a fork truck or something, it'll, it'll go. Uh, enough about my book. Okay. <laughs> okay, so some other things we've been working on too as a committee, we've been talking about heating and cooling, um, security systems, um, fire suppression, and multimedia. So uh, we think we need a structure with Wi-Fi, maybe some presentation screens and that sort of thing. So we, we always looked at this as if we could design the perfect boat, what kind of things we want on it. So we keep talking about these things with hopes that we have it in the budget. Um, but yeah, we do envision something that we can use more than you know a few months out of the year. We want to use it year round, make it rentable. And then uh, we probably have to have someone running this boat as well once it gets up and, up and running, so to speak, just to monitor the activities on the boat. You know, if you have a Saturday evening wedding, you need someone there to just keep an eye on the, the, the structures. Any questions about the, the design, the 3D model, or where we are today? You said that uh, you'll have to hire somebody to basically manage the boat if that person is being paid out of where? What we're anticipating is that um, hopefully it'll generate enough revenue to pay for itself. 
And so that person could be paid for all those funds. And if not, then we have to go to plan B. Let me address that. Our plan when we first put this committee together was to raise enough money and have sort of like an endowment fund for maintenance. That's because I've been with the boat and a lot of you people have worked in the mall longer than I have, but I've been with this last boat here and that was always the problem with the boat. So myself and Liz put this together, that was near the top of the list, not the top of the list. We don't want to burden the taxpayers, we don't want to burden generations down the road and we're gone with maintenance. That we are addressing that. Mm -hmm. if, if it all comes to fruition, we are going to try to raise enough money to put some money away and it will be sort of like the cable TV, only the interest will be used for repairs, and like Rich said, you know, there'll be money raised, and uh, Rich, this is in the rec department, mm -hmm. the board is now in the rec department. It's, uh, yeah, we're looking at it like a park structure, so we're basically using it as the same rental method that we use for parks. It's a little more involved, of course, but. Yeah, and, nope. and that was done too, to, to open up for grants too. We're going to develop a business model similar to what Hudson Bill did with their Terra Square, um, utilize it as a rental center, uh, community center, things of that nature. One of the advantages we have in this aspect is, is that with putting the HVAC is, and we can operate it year round, which then that would allow us to plan properly, generate revenue year round. Hudson does a fantastic job with that. Yes. Yeah, we got very good feedback from Hudson Villa. They were in the black in the first year, I think. This time. Yeah. yeah. So we're hoping for the same success. I would think so. I, I won't make any assumptions as to the numbers you'll make, but off of the three different boats that I rent, the one being I, pretty close to identical to this, I don't see any problem with you guys making more than enough to cover your maintenance and whoever's in charge of scheduling and uh, running the operation, I, I think you'll do just fine. We incorporate parts of that too, into the rental fee, the security deposit, the insurance. So. Can't hear you, Mike. Oh, yeah, I turned my mic. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You can incorporate part of that cost into the rental fee, security deposit, <clears throat> and then put an insurance right on there and says, you know, somebody's going to be there. Okay. It'll be a learning situation for the public, the city, but again, our purpose was, our goal was to repurpose the boat. We wanted to head in that direction to be a facility where people could use it year-round, rent it, and I, I really think it's with the right person, right for marketing and everything. I think there's if there's a market for it. You can get buried on a boat, or a conference on a boat. It's unique. You have a council meeting on the boat. You could. <laughs> yes. yes you Bill Simonson already said he did a huge yeah. job on the boat. Yeah. Bill Simonson, no point. We could, we could use that one. <coughs> okay, if there's no additional questions, then we'll move on to the next phase, which will be the interior design. And this will require a little show and tell, so we all want to get up and go yeah. see what Shannon has brought us. <laughs> Um, so, first of all, if you want to go over here, uh, you might as well just wander around and see what it looks like anyway. But uh, what we come up with is we're trying to keep the traditional colors that uh, the original boat had. So we want that to still um, be recognizable. The boat itself is going to be pretty recognizable as, you know, very similar to the original boat. So we're looking at a black hull. Uh, you know, just got color ones here. You know, just standard, like black, all white. For the main part of the boat, uh, we're going to use a red that's um, not orange and not purple. Hopefully, a really nice uh, cherry red uh, for, the, for the back and for some of the trims. Thank you. This might help. Yep. And then the decks, I'm actually just uh, proposing to use a gray uh, for the decks. So it's, we really want it to look like a boat. We don't want it to disappear and get too ornate or 
um, not fit into the feeling of Lowell, which there's a word, it's called vernacular. It's like a look that is developed over time in a certain place. And that's kind of what we want to do here. We want to keep it within the vernacular of what Lowell is used to, the beautiful old buildings. It's going to be a beautiful old looking boat, um, but have some modern uh, parts to it. And the other fun thing we're going to do, we'd like to do is impose, is to use the, this blue, which is called Haint Blue. It's about haunt, haunted, uh, it's, it's like a traditional color for ceilings in boats and cottages. Um, it actually comes from the south, but it comes from the 1800s. They felt that this blue kept evil spirits away from their boats and cottages. So if you wanted to use that, and actually I found some photos um, with those color schemes if you want to come up and look at them. Um, it's really traditional to use the gray porch floor and that blue on the ceiling. Uh, and I've heard other things like it keeps mosquitoes away, but I don't believe it. <laughs> in Michigan. So then just for kind of an overall look, um, some ideas for the inside, we're proposing to do a coppered ceiling on the main floor, which we feel like should be more important on the floor. Um, that's where, you know, that's where the main table would be for a wedding or things like that. And I'd like to paint that blue um, on the ceiling in between the coffers. So, um, and it, you know, what style we chose of the three styles that I put together would affect like how detailed these, these things would be, and how ornate or simple they would get. So each item can kind of get more ornate. Like we're going to have posts inside. Do we want them to be more ornate with gingerbread or do we want to keep them uh, relatively simple and square and elegant? You know, so you, you guys can look at these if you want to walk up here. And then we were thinking wainscoting on that main floor too, like under the windows, so that would give it a little bit more importance and uh, make it a little bit more uh, celebration type feel. And then on that second floor, um, that ceiling, I'd like to do a tray ceiling and do like a tin ceiling, which doesn't have to be tin. Now they have like vinyls that look like tin. It could be all different colors, and that of course depends on our color scheme too. Um, but you can kind of coffer that outside edge, which points up the cool shape of it, and then have that tin, which is very appropriate for that you know, style of the boat. And on that second floor, um, this is just an example of actually the um, shiplap board that would be appropriate. Try to ignore the everything else in the photo because it's bedroom, but the shiplap is super cool. Instead of doing just your plane, what you've seen, you know, six inch ship left. This is very authentic. It's got the strip in the middle and I think that would look really great on that second floor. And then the third story, we want to do something really fun up there because that room is going to be a real draw, I think, for everyone. They're going to want meetings up there. It's just going to be a cool spot um, for conferences and things like that. So um, I've got all kinds of ideas for up there. Uh, I want to do maps of like the Grand River and the Flat River. I think I'd like to put those on the wall, like wallpaper. Um, and we'll see, you know, it just depends on where we land with the style. So if we want to move on over there, I kind of want to uh, point out, I tried to choose three different styles that would be appropriate for the boat. And they kind of go from, and I gave my own names, trying to uh, avoid names that people don't like, but still present the style. So this one, um, this is the American classic style. I really fell in love with the stars when I saw them. They seemed really appropriate for the boat. Um, and then I chose a fabric that has blues as well and Michigan wildlife and Michigan plants. And I just love that because I grew up in Michigan and mostly in the woods from the fields. I was an outdoor kid and and that just, I just love that whole feel. And then um, the papers, all of the products that you're looking at here would be something like this in commercial grade, very durable. Um, so, you know, what you're looking at might not be the exact product, but I'm trying to show you like the color and the look that we're shooting for. So um, I would use paper. This one has like silvery tones, super pretty. And keep in mind, we're doing this not just something that we like, but to attract people who want to rent this for different occasions. So uh, I think the silvery blues and these uh, soft browns that I chose for this one 
um, they'll lend itself to like doing bunting at the 4th of July or doing other colors that aren't going to clash with it because you know how weddings are, everyone wants to choose their own colors. So just trying to keep it a little bit more um, elegant and simple. That's kind of the theme now for people. They're, they're more into, they want it to look historic, but they don't want it to be too fancy and ornate. They just don't feel comfortable with that. So that's why they're having weddings and farms and places like that. But we want them to have weddings you know, on our boat. So if you want to look up here, I've got some you know, silvery metals we would use. Um, and actually, these pictures on each vignette are just, I tried to pick a staircase that would reflect the style. Um, this one would be very elegant and simple, lots of white painted woodwork, um, because that staircase is going to be the center uh, focus for the whole boat. It's just going to be beautiful, and that's where they're going to want photos. And I'm envisioning at the top of the stairs doing a huge mirror with fabric on either side. So that's why I have some fabric showing. That's probably the only place we'll really have <coughs> Um, but that'll be like the, the place that everybody wants to get their photos taken. And we'll have a wonderful chandelier over that staircase too. And if we were going to do our stars, this had little stars on it, but this is actually a great big star um, light fixture. So that's one I'm calling American Classic. Um, and then this one is really a lot of fun. Um, it's vintage, uh, it's kind of like the 1920s when everything was becoming industrialized. It's actually, the word for it is steampunk, but not many people know that, but Mitch did. I was really impressed. He's the one that brought it up. I'm like, yeah, that's it. That's what I did. I just didn't want to use that word. Yeah, people come ride the boat and dress up just to be just on the boat. Just to do that, yeah. yeah. Just to do it. So it's retro, and this is a really perfect picture of it because they really liked industrialization, like, shiny metals, they liked it to look old and kind of like worn, you know, it was a very rich look, kind of like, um, kind of like the gentleman's smoking club, kind of look of the 1920s. So it is vintage and it is old, but I want to just present that for a different look um, to, you know, give you guys some options. Again, silvery wallpapers that are uh, high use rated uh, and of course, everything that we would choose would be for commercial grade and you know durability and then this one um, is really fun and appropriate too it's more ornate i'm calling it main street historic and i took the liberty of using my own showroom across the street the apartment um, upstairs in the Lowell state bank building is the building that i remodeled in town years ago ran my showroom out of but this is the look it's like very rich still not over the top like you would see in Louisiana or down south. Not, you know, not over the top Victorian, but very rich, warm colors, um, just more ornate. Golds, you know, you can see the golds in the fabrics. Gold, I would use like a brushed brass, whoops, sorry, a brushed brass uh, metal, and then those rich, dark patterns on the carpets. And you can see that it would be very beautiful to do something like that too. So basically, we uh, looked at all of these last week and I'm going to leave it up to you, Rich, to say what you will about that. <laughs> well, the working group really looked at all three of these, and there's pretty much consensus that we want to make a recommendation to the committee and the council that we choose the American classic. We just like the, the style. It feels, feels like small town America, Americana, red, white, and blue, and so that's the one that we would recommend that we go with. Um, there's any objections or open the air, but we'd like you to support our recommendation and let us choose American Classic. Any thoughts? Yeah. 